And welcome back. Term limited county council member Hans Reamer announced last week that he's running for county executive. Mike, is Reamer running to be an alternative to the county executive, Mark Elrich, who's on the left, and businessman David Blair, who's considered more on the right? Probably. Um, I, see, I, I see David and, and Hans kind of in the same space, um, which is interesting because that's what we got last election, where you ended up with you had about a, a group of three, um, including David Blair, um, Rose Krasnow, Roger Berlin are kind of in that same space, then kind of all vying for that same vote, which then opened the door for, for Mark, who I think most people recognize has a, you know, has a pretty solid 28, 30% who will probably vote for him no matter what, which gives you a whole lot of other folks unless you start splitting that vote. I think the other interesting thing is you've still got a couple other people out there who have yet to determine, have yet to indicate whether or not they're going to run. People like Nancy Navarro, Greg Rice, who, again, um, present some different dynamics from their backgrounds, but also kind of end up in that middle space. And so I'll be curious to see what happens over the course of the next couple months. Who else jumps in this? Well, I, I mean, your comment is, is really well, well taken because, I mean, the, the Blair-Elrich race was decided by 77 votes. Right. Something, something of that nature. And in a multi-candidate uh, election, I think that favors Mark. Uh, because he does have such a strong core, core, core belief there. Um, my, uh, Mark, I want to go to you because two weeks ago, uh, panelist Sam Statlin uh, praised County Executive Mark Elridge for the good job he's done in, the, in office. And what's your assessment of, as to whether or not the, those, that's a sentiment that should be shared or there are weaknesses that may open up the door for a, a David Blair or for a, a Hans Reamer? Well, well, Sam has been absolutely consistent in support of the county executive. So I will, I'll give him props there. He was a supporter before the primary last go around. Um, I think the county has important challenges. Uh, I think we really need to talk about preserving services and maintaining services as opposed to some of the sort of virtual circuit signaling uh, activities that we've been engaging in. Um, so I, I, I think there's an opportunity. I'm not quite sure that uh, Hans has got as sort of clear a lane. Uh, I think he's got some challenges there. Uh, and obviously, where there'd be additional council candidates getting in as well, I think that would squeeze him that much more. Interesting. Well, interestingly, I was going to say, I think the fact that COVID happened actually ends up benefiting Mark to some degree because as we've talked here previously, he's taken a fairly conservative approach, which has resonated as we've already talked about with a lot of the county's residents. And so to the point where people are still wearing masks when they don't even have to be. And so I think that, because I think in the absence of that, it's really difficult to find anything that you can point to say Mark has really accomplished in this term. Well, I think, you know, the old axiom is, you vote for or against the guy in office. And if you're going to vote, vote against him, you got to be angry. Mm -hmm. And I don't see that, that dissatisfaction yet. Uh, I mean, it's a long time between now and, and next April uh, when, the, when the primaries are. But I don't see that, uh, the, the strong dissatisfaction yet. So I hate admitting uh, when Sam is right, but uh, he may be right this time. Well, he may be right that he wins. That doesn't necessarily mean he's done a good job. Those are two different things. That is, those, that is always, <laughs> there's always um, a two different, two different uh, points of the spectrum. Now, before we go to parting shots, I mean, this was something that, that was of concern only to me, probably. Do either of you care that the White Flint Metro Station is being renamed North Bethesda? Uh, you know, I was going to make the observation that that uh, uh, people take a long time being re-educated on, on names. Um, I think of Montgomery Mall. Uh, technically, Montgomery Mall hasn't been Montgomery Mall for quite some time. It's uh, something else. Uh, and uh, I have given up referring to CVSs as people's drugs, but uh, <laughs> it, 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 takes, it takes a while for these changes to become part of the, the, you know, the way people describe places. Well, I, 
I'm just glad we aren't going to have to pay for it. That the federal government is going to make it. Well, the but but I think it's indicative though of the, of the of our previous conversation. So White Flint hasn't developed it the way we hoped White Flint would develop, and so if we change the name, perhaps we won't notice the fact that it hasn't built out the way we hoped it would build out. <laughs> well, you know, I remember when. Of course I do, because I'm old. Uh, when White Flint first opened, and they had an I Magnon and a Joseph Magnon, and it was quite a, you know, attraction for uh, Montgomery County shoppers uh, uh, who wanted high-end retail. So it, it's pretty amazing. Before we wrap, I want to talk, I mentioned two, two things. A former House of Delegate member and contributing 21 on this panelist, Marce Morales, announced this week that she's running for District 4, the Councilmanic seat currently held by Nancy Navarro, who is term limited and cannot run. Uh, I'm wishing Marce all, all good things. And uh, educator Brandy Brooks announced that she's running for an at-large seat on the County Council as well. Now we got to stay tuned for Party Chat.